Well, we're at the toy store. Reflecting upon life. Eat. I'm filming the store. Coming back. I'm just doing some filming here. Oh, this is, oh, who is this? That is somebody with, uh, yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah, who's this at? Don't be shooting video while I'm eating. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> um, but I, I don't know if this, I'm trying to remember if we're going to do this. I think it's part of a custom, but. On the chair? Yeah, but I mean, it's like, but we, we're going to make it available. You know, but I think the standards are going to probably just all, you know, you can do them either way you want them. All right, hey, t uh, today we're going to be building um, one of the new SUL OCS kites that come from Heads Up Kites from uh, Pam, Kirk, and Mike Dennis out of San Diego. Um, we usually get the sails in. They're made out of Icarex, of course. Um, this is actually one of the first ones that we're going to add um, the black, like a stripe on the outside, which will be available, you know, on our website. We'll also be able to, uh, from now on, if you wanted to change the bottom two panels, you can actually have these in different colors as well. So we're adding a little bit of uh, extra, you know, ability to change panels on the kite. Usually when the kites come in, I have to prep them and put holes in the, the tips of the kite where we're going to run the line for the leading edges. And on this particular model, I actually have to blow holes in, in each one of the, the tabs for the standoff. So I've made a template that makes sure that I can put this on, to, on the kite and then put a mark so that on each one of these I end up with this being exactly where I need them to be. And then I'm going to blow out a really tiny hole here that will take the 8-0 standoff with a cap on the back. So that tip you have there is a seat. Yeah, yeah, this is a really small soldering iron that has got the tip manicured for just doing this. And I just want to slightly, so that actually it's a very, very tight fit. Okay, and that's pretty much it. One of the really important things with um, building sport kites is prepping the tubes and making sure that the donuts or the placement of the connectors end up in the same place all the time on every kite. So what we usually do, I'm not really a big fan of using C-clips because more times than not they break loose, they come off of your kite. So we usually use donuts or end caps and I have a special tool that I can make exact size donuts every time and I'll move. So if you push them into place, this one happens to be about 10 inches from the tip, you back it off, run a little bit of glue around the outside, push the donut back into place. Okay, we're, I've got all of the parts now assembled, top leading edges, bottom leading, leading edges, the spreaders, you know, I've got standoffs here, we're going to start assembling the kite. I've always worked on the, you know, I like to work on a hook because it's easy, you know, to, to put the kites up this way and put, people say, well, how do you move stuff around when the donuts are already on the tubes? Well, we put a little spray silicone on here so that these things are going to slide easily when you put them in the kite. So I'm going to start with putting the top leading edge in this kite. And on this particular model, we have the slices that go in the leading edges so that the bridle lines slide over the outside edge. But we're putting this all the way in. Slide this in and then it's pretty much a matter of working this. Because of the, the little bit of silicone, it makes it easier. You have to be careful with the donuts when they come through to make sure those are placed to make sure that this slides easy and to make sure that there's a good coat so that this is easier to get through. Usually framing the kites doesn't take a long time 
It's about probably 20-30 minutes to do a good job, but the real ready to go and knowing where everything goes. You know what's good about doing this live is that whatever problem you run into, people can see how you can actually work your way around yeah, everything it. Everything is actually being slid on the leading edge. And each one of these kites gets hand built this way. And there, we've got a leading edge put in this way. Now, one of the next things is once that you've got the other side in as well, we're going to put the caps. And on this particular kite, they're a little bit different. I don't, to have a knot and be able to cinch this, I've started with a, um, a 6 millimeter FSD cap and actually have trimmed it off to make it smaller because this kite's very light and I want something that's very efficient. So we've done that and I've also taken, taken a piece of this new Spectra it, well, it's actually a bridle line that's got Spectre running through it, and this is a new line that we just started carrying that's a 25 kilo, or basically about 60 pounds. This stuff won't stretch. It's a really nice line, and it's really nice that they started having this particular size. But on this kite, we're going to insert, and it, it, then it depends on whether or not the tied loop at one end is on the inside or the outside. I usually prefer them to be on the inside. They're less likely to catch when you're flying on your fly lines. So basically what I'm doing is going through, bringing the line through, and basically you've got a cinch. And as you're doing this, this allows you to actually then tension the wingtip as much as you'd want. There is some camber built into this kite, so we want to work this, and usually I'm keeping the knot as close as to the top, bring it up so that I've got a little bit of load on the kite, and then basically with this, I can actually wrap them this around, and usually I put it like six times around here until it's secure. That way, <coughs> if you have to take it off, there's enough wraps to hold everything in place, and then basically I'm cutting this off. I use a lot of side cutters. They seem to be easier. And then any time that we're doing stuff with line, you want to always seal the end so that it doesn't fray. And then I've also discovered with this particular sudden that we need to have a cap that protects this and holds this from coming undone. I'm using my spreader tools again because I've got this special end cap that if it's spread, really ends up to be exactly the right size and goes over this whole thing securely and just makes for a really, really clean end. Okay, once that we've got both the leading edges in and securely fastened at the wing tips with our stuff, I've got my top spreader in hand. We're going to open up the kite so it's a little bit easier to work on at this point on this wrap. I'm going to move this over because we're going to then move to the spine. I'm going to move the kite on the back. And in this particular kite, We've got this all pre-done. We've gone to a lighter tail on this particular kite, which comes down through into the center tee. Well, first, we're going to be able to insert this from the nose to here. Okay. Now, we're dealing with a leech line on this particular kite. The lines on all of, most of the, all the Skyburner kites are sewn in the tip. The lines are run through the trailing edge and come out through the bottom here. On this particular kite, I'm short on my lower, on my spine at the bottom end, so I've made an extension that brings it to just past so that we have a good pull rate on this line that comes through here. And as you can see, it ends up crisscrossing this way so that 
this line comes through and when it's under tension it can actually float. It's going to actually go up and end up onto a bungee. What, but for that, in order for this to happen, one of the things that I've done is that by taking an end cap and putting a couple of slices in it on both sides evenly, actually put this so that it comes and sandwiches both of the lines so that when this is pulled up tight, you can see the lines come out the side and it actually does go left or right and will keep tension on an even flow as the kite flies and it will fluctuate. And then we take this, tighten up the tail, and we're not going to do this until after we put the bridles on because it'll make it easier then and we'll do that at the end. So at that point I'm pretty much done with this until one of the last things and we do this. I'm going to turn the kite around. At this point we've got the whole kite put together. We can now put in the cross struts or the lower spreaders. Six millimeter here. We're usually making this long enough so that we have enough to be securely onto the new zero twos, like so. We're going to plug these in. There are APA connectors on the bottom, both sides. Okay. Now we've got everything ready, and we'll. The next thing we're going to do is do the standoff connectors and put those on, and I'll show you how to do that. This particular kite, one of the biggest places that we get wear is right where this tail wraps around and goes against this tail piece. So we're going to put this extra layer so that when this comes around it actually is gives it more protection and another layer of protection on this kite. In order to make the standoffs on this kite we're keeping everything really light. I'm using an 8-0 solid rod which is our standoff. There's two different lengths on this kite. But there isn't anybody right now that is making a really lightweight part for attaching these to the sail of your kite. You saw earlier where I blew really small holes in the tabs on the sail. So what I've done, and I've been doing this for probably 15 or 16 years with the Pro Dancer Super Ultralight as well, is that I buy these bags of beads that are really small and I actually have to then take them because they're not small enough in diameter and I have to drill these out with a, a drill bit that allows them to just snugly fit onto this tube. And then I have another part of a, that, that I put a piece of glue on, you rotate them and you actually let them dry and they end up with this bead as a stop and this will never come off of here. This plastic, when you're using the jet type glue, will actually melt this piece of plastic and adhere to this carbon. So you end up with the end cap on here and then your standoffs. This will go through the hole and in, in the sail of your kite on the tab sail. And that's what we're going to do next. I've got the longer, in, uh, the longer standoffs on this kite go onto the inside, shorter ones on the outside. We're actually pushing these through these holes that are a really nice tight fit. Same thing on this side. Like so. Pretty much, we're getting there. Okay, well I'm still running the camera. So we turned it around, right? So the spine is a 2P? Yeah, we're using a 2P for the spine, which is a 9 gram tube. 